Bonjour. Bonjour. How are we? Very good, thank you. You okay? Good. Yeah, good man, good. So uh, this, is, uh, this is Dan Sheehan, guys. Um, good to see you, Dan. Uh, we've just been having a little chat before this as well, but um, just to give you a bit of uh, an intro, like, you know, you're obviously you know, a good friend of mine. We've known each other a couple of years now, um, involved with Ideas and Beers, a group for, you know, for a good couple of months over upwards of a year now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, if you, uh, yeah, tell me a little bit about yourself first of all, Dan, and just like, you know, just so people listening know who you are and, uh, yeah. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, I do personal training. Um, and I have done since about 2013. Hmm. Um, that's, to be honest, gone on the back burner a little bit lately because I actually um, enrolled in university two years ago. Hmm. So yeah, I'm back in university now. Um, also working and coaching with the university football team, hmm. uh, playing there as well. And yeah, on my set, you know, my degree. So it's hard to, uh, personal training's hard to go on the back burner a little bit just because uh, finding it hard to juggle the football with the, um, obviously, university uh, exams, etc. Hmm. And so you're in year, year two, you said now of the university. Yeah, right? my second year. So just closing up my second year. Hmm. Um, I've been like kind of accepted onto what I want to do for my dissertation, which is good. Hmm. And um, yeah, finish my third year, and then hopefully I'll uh, be able to get a degree at the end of it. Awesome. How, how, how do you, so you, how would you say, you know, like juggling the, the two of them, obviously, well, everything that you're doing, is it that uh, I imagine it is quite difficult trying to. To do um, how how would you find you you know you manage it for somebody who might be listening? At first, if I'm being honest, I did find it really difficult. But I think it was because I hadn't been in learning for so long. Okay. Um, some of the students might be, I don't know, like 18, 19, 20, uh, mm. coming from college and stuff. Mm. But for me, I'd been working um, yeah. and playing football. So going back to uni at first, it was almost like I had to learn how to learn again. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which which was weird, but yeah, I found like found my rhythm a little bit, and yeah, my time management has definitely got better. Mm. Um, just through just through the sense of um, I tend to timetable my weeks just to see like what slots I can fit in. For instance, mm. like, I don't know. Fo- football is always like a set uh, training schedule, and yeah. the semesters change. Uh, the lectures change every semester, but. I'll just try and see any space I've got then, like if I can fit in training or um, like my own revision and stuff just to try and help me. But yeah, it's been a challenge, but I think I've got a nail down in a minute. That's, that's good. I think, you know what, it's, it's, I like the way you said that you have to learn how to learn again. Because um, that's quite interesting. I think most people like leave school uh, or, you know, or leave school or go to college or whatever, like not everybody goes on to, to university. And I think you only, if you think about it, um, if you don't kind of go on to university or anything or carry on staying in like academia then after that i suppose you do kind of forget what it is like to to actually to go away to revise to do like you know to, to do stuff in your own time and things like that so i mean with me i i, I haven't been to university but i've been to college and I, i've done a couple of courses you know after that so i i know exactly what you mean when i've had some time off and then gone back to like college or whatever i'm a, i kind of go oh i'm back here now actually what do i you know, how do I work this into my schedule and stuff like that? Yeah, I think, you know, that's quite interesting. Um, so what, what, you know, with the football as well, what's, because uh, what were you, obviously you were playing football yourself before this, wasn't it, weren't you? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, when I'm um, with the football, um, always played football um, since I was a child. Just basically my, uh, I got two older sisters I have. And um, yeah, my mother used to take me to what my sisters were doing. So, like, first it was gymnastics, which I was a shambles at. <laughs> and then she got me to, like, Mark Jumin stage school, oh, yeah. um, which I was a shambles at, again. Um, I got monotone voice. I can't sing or dance. Um, I can dance after a few pints of lying, but, yeah, not, <laughs> not a great dancer. Um, but, yeah, so then they took me to football. Um, sorry, they took me to jiu-jitsu then, and I got beat up by a girl. So <laughs> I knew that wasn't for me. Um, and then they took me to football and then, yeah, I just really enjoyed it. Mm. Um, played up until I was about 15 then with uh, West End. Mm. And then the Swans picked me up. And then from there, I was with the Swans till uh, from like 2007, I left school. Yeah. Was about 2010. So two years youth and one year pro, mm. um, which was, that was class. Like obviously being around like elite players at the time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that that's, that, and then that's it. It managed me to, Allowed me, sorry, to travel. Like, I've been to places like Singapore, Australia, Washington, yeah. Sweden, all around the UK. It's all football. Yeah. So, yeah. 
wicked. Who's who was playing for the Swans at that time? Like names that we'd know. Like I'm terrible with football, right? So I haven't got a clue. But like you know, who, who was who was playing at the time? So when I was there, you had people like obviously Trans, Bretts, yeah. Ferry Bordy, um, Dan Prattley, uh, Angel Rangel, loads loads of big names. It was wicked to be around. To be fair. Yeah, do you know what? That's I was going to say. Those those are the kind of names that I remember actually, because I think that would have probably been like I I was like I've never been big into football, but I did used to go down to the Swans, you know, a couple of times when I was a bit younger, and I think uh, those are the kind of the names I remember actually. So yeah, that's I'm surprised I remember that many names. So I knew <laughs> that many names you just mentioned. Yeah, it was, that was kind of like the sort of the start of the rise of the Swans as well, wasn't it? Around that era, coming yeah. up from League One, the Championship, and then obviously again the Premiership. Mm. And with, so, what uh, with the football now? Then, you, what who are you doing? Like, obviously, is it just the university that you're you're coaching with uh, football? Um, yeah. So, as a team, um, at the moment, yeah, just work and play for Swansea University. Mm. Um, but I also do the men's and the ladies. So sometimes mm. I'll take the ladies for a session, whether it's at Fairwood. Um, we're lucky we get to use the Swans training facilities down in Fairwood. Mm. So for pitch sessions, it's down there. Yeah. Then. Um, in the shed then, so you know where Titan is taken with Gareth Beer. Yeah. Um, that's where the strength Shout of the out Gareth Beer there. <laughs> Shout yeah. out to Titan. <laughs> I've just put up his um his deck of cards thing on my uh fitness account now. I did I have just seen it. I've just I, seen it actually. It looks sad. Right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Um yeah, so yeah, th- that's the teams I do. Mm. Um but because of personal training and stuff, I do some one to ones. Mm. Um, and I've been quite lucky. I started like when I was over at working in Life Gym in Land Sam, um, like offering it. And I had a couple of young lads who were like in a transition from finishing school and getting to youth um, football. And yeah, they've, they've had a bit of success as well. So doing one to ones with them is something I really enjoy. Ah, that's good. Especially when you see the, the, you know, the results that they're getting from it and the value they're taking from it, isn't it? Yeah. And ah, that's good. I, I, I've always enjoyed coaching um, mm-hmm. and like kind of teaching, and, but learning myself as well. So I think I just enjoy like that type of passing knowledge back as well. So yeah, yeah. that's what do you know what they say that though? There's um, I don't know if it's the Stoics or someone that you know they they, they they talk about it anyway. That you're always either you know uh, a master, you're either a master or you're a, you know apprentice. Realistically, yeah. I mean you're learning, you learn to a certain point, and then you know you're teaching or or like you know for example, there's certain things that you are like a master at, you know, which you're able to practice, you know, like teach other people like football for example and about fitness um you know but then other areas then you're a student as well and i think it's good to have a healthy balance of the two of them and not really you know because i think when you when somebody thinks that they've they've got all of the knowledge there is to to have you know you you curb your learning then don't you? you're not able to to kind of learn anymore so it's good to to have that healthy balance and to throw yourself in in new waters if you like because uh you know it, it, you know it does help you grow all the way around I mean, I, I think you bang on there. Funny enough, you know, you're saying that mm. I can't remember like what source this is from, um, whether I was reading or like watching something, but mm. I remember uh, this guy saying like he functions best mm. when like he's got a mentor. So someone mm. like that's better than him in a certain field. Yeah. And someone who's maybe not as good as him in a certain field. So like he'll feed off the knowledge of the mentor and then relay yeah. it back to like someone else who's learning. And he said like, he just finds it a great way to grow. I can't remember who it was or what it was from, but yeah. no, I, I do. I think I've heard something similar before. Um, and and I kind of, to be fair, I, I know that to be true myself. Um, only because I think well, when would it have been? 2013. Uh, I finished the Entrepreneurship Academy in Wales I was in. Um, you know, it was like a two-year qualification rammed into like nine months or something. So it was quite intensive, but it was like it was like the apprentice. Do you know what I mean? So we had to set up a business at the end of it to, to pass the course. Um, you know, and we had the qualification and stuff for it. But it was um, it was just it was about six months after that. Uh, so we set I set up the Tattoo Studio with uh, with Lee Davis and. I think it was about six months afterwards, they took me back on um, to that course to go and speak to all of the people who were in the next, um, you know, the next year, basically the next group. And I, I didn't realize how much I'd learned within that one year until I was actually going back and talking to everyone about it. And I remember the person who did the induction for the course for me when I was you know, going on to it or looking to go on to it. I remember just being blown away by how that person, how knowledgeable the person was and, you know, the, the stuff that they were talking about. And 
when I went back then to deliver in front of people, I just had all this knowledge and I was kind of spitting this stuff out that I didn't even realize had sunk in. Yeah. And I walked over there just buzzing, like just, oh my God, you know, I, I, how did I even, how did I just manage to do that? And I just, that, at that moment, I just realized like the value in teaching for your own self-progression you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it really does. It helps you, you know, the information you process, you know, when you can relay it back, it reemphasizes it and brings it back up in your mind. And then I say, I think you, that's, that's part of the self-growth process for me. Definitely. I mean, I totally agree with you there. 100%. That's something for me as well. Like, um, like the consistency of doing it as well. So yeah. like, because with the one to ones, it tends to be just through the preseason uh, periods. Mm. That's why I like, having the team to work with in the like throughout the season so it's the consistency because you know if you don't practice stuff you do tend to like regress or fall off a little bit on you so yeah, yeah it's just keeping on top of it for me and i think that helps as well yeah the, ha- the habit building funny enough i was reading i read um i've got, I've got the book for sure actually the the daily stoic um yeah. it's funny you said that right because the today's thing is basically gives you a different um a different action or a different like points uh from like marcus aurelius or epictetus or whatever like you know each day and the one today is fueling the habit bonfire and essentially you know they're talking about what aristotle said about we are what we repeatedly do and you yeah. know what well, well, we are what we repeatedly do therefore excellence is not an act but a habit yeah. uh so it's just what you said but there then have brought it back up actually it's uh it, it is just instilling those things that you want to you know, the, 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 the person you want to become or the things you want to do in your life later on, you know, you need to be kind of building up your habits, um, you know, to, to reach that point, you know, like learning, for example, like you've done with, with the university, I suppose a lot of it has had to be quite habitual now. It's not like you just dip in, you know, your toes in and out as and when you've got to have a structured approach to it. I mean, totally. Um, I've been, I've been lucky as well, if I'm being honest to um, uni's been great. Like the lecturers like be really knowledgeable, obviously. Mm. Um, and sitting there for like an hour might be okay. Anything over an hour, I, I probably tend to drift off and fall yeah. off a little bit. <laughs> um, the labs I kind of engage in. But yeah, I've been really lucky. Like even though the 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 lads I mix with are mm-hmm. younger, um, they're probably like nineteen twenty. They're more mature than me, which isn't surprising. Mm-hmm. Um, and I tend to learn off them more than like just going to the lectures, if that makes sense. So yeah, yeah and and I'm in the habit of them. So like I don't know, for instance sometimes like once a week or maybe once every two weeks hmm. you just have a little FaceTime or thing and just go through some work and I find that really does help so them them habits for me are massive yeah definitely that's yeah that's interesting like you, you learn from other people just as much as you learn from the people who are actually teaching you isn't it Do you know what I mean like your peers uh have a big uh you know a big part to play in there I think going back to the the entrepreneurship academy I was in I think the people that I was with in there you know they all had different disciplines, you know, for example, uh, Jim from my mate from North Wales, he, um, he came down specifically for that course from North Wales and he's, you know, major entrepreneur. He's got so many different things on the go, but he's you know, a farmer by your trade. So his family have got land and things like that, but he was just so entrepreneurial and he had a different approach to, uh, you know, to, to looking at it. And then you had Josh Dykes, who's got um, you know, multiple businesses as well. And he was already running an events company from 17. So I think he would have been like 18 or 19 at this point, And I was about 19, 20. And, uh, you know, he'd already been running an, an events company from before he could actually go to his own events because of the age. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, you definitely do learn from the people that are uh, around you. I think it's Tim Ferriss uh, says you are the average of the five people you spend the most yeah. time with. And it's, yeah, hundred yeah, percent true. So as I've gotten older, I kind of relate to that more as well and, and understand it more. Um, yeah. I think growing up, it's a little bit tough, isn't it? Because you conform to a lot of things. Mm. But yeah, I think as you get older, you do become your own person more. Oh, um, yeah. Kind of, kind of linking that back, the habits, I find like, it's a little bit cliche, but like, I do believe you can be what you want to be. Obviously, with regards to stuff like talent and skill, it's a little bit different. You know, you either can sing or you can't type of thing. Yeah. But yeah. Um, with regards to like hard work, anyone can put in the time to, to become something if, if you're willing to and, and if you persistently and consistently keep doing it. So, yeah, I'm a big believer in that. There's a, there's a quote, I'm not sure who's, who it's from. Um, it says... Hard week, hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. Yeah, it's true, mate. <laughs> Definitely. Mm. Definitely true. 
so we're going back to like the current situation then so obviously we are in what month is it now may yeah may 2020 so if anyone's listening you know in the, like a couple of months time or whatever you know this is doing during the great uh, uk lockdown um <laughs> so with you in the fitness industry obviously that it's taken a massive hit at the moment the fitness industry in some ways uh but then in other ways it's actually doing pretty well isn't it like what's your take on you know the fitness industry kind of right now you know the state of it uh like for example let's you know the gyms and things like that and what do you think what what do you think comes next for the fitness industry do you think that there's going to be a lot of gyms shut in do you think there's going to be you know what, what's your take on it um for i i do feel for like gym owners at the at the moment because obviously no one could have predicted this so like in terms of maybe startup gyms or like uh, individual gyms are probably really going to struggle. Yeah. I'd like to think some members see the value in it though and would maybe continue paying at either like a full price or a reduced price like mm-hmm. through the period to, if you enjoy going, you'd hopefully want to see it through, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think everyone's going to have to adapt because until we know for, in- for certain when this lockdown is going to end, mm-hmm. it's only either going to be um, online training, mm-hmm. um, which I've seen a lot of and I think some PTs around the world would have made a nice bit of dough from, uh, yeah. from what they're doing. But yeah, either that or at a distance one-to-ones, I can't see how gyms can reopen unless it's maybe a slotted system yeah. where you have a certain amount of allowed in at a certain time and, and it sticks to that kind of rigid schedule. Um, mm. I can't see it changing. Um, you know, well, I'm going to plug actually... myself for you, mate. I'm not going to lie. Mm. Uh, I know you've seen the um, street workouts I've been doing. <laughs> yeah. And the funny thing is, right, it kind of started as like a little bit of a joke. Yeah. With my mum saying, Oh, you should take some street workouts. Yeah. Because <laughs> the neighbors said they would do it. And I was a little bit um and ah in like at first because of social distancing, because I was like, Well, we're not allowed around like close contact with each other. Yeah. yeah. Um, we can't use any equipment because it'd have to be wiped down, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. Um, and it came to the weekend, it came to the Saturday, and all my neighbors were out in like the Lycra and the Spandex, like love and love. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so I went out with my boombox and I'd uh, done a session. And then every Saturday since, they've been out to be fair to them. And I really keep the distance in rules, but yeah, it's, it's been awesome. Yeah, I was, you know, the first time I seen it, I was in tears. I was like, that's amazing. Because you can see as well, like everybody is way apart from one another. And you've, you've done it stationed as well, haven't you? So you can see, you know, you've got, say, like for people running up and down little st- you know, staircases, like further down. And then you've got people doing like burpees. Um, you know, then you've got, uh, what was it, like step ups on the curb. Um, yeah. Squats. Steps up on the car, wall sets on their walls. It's, it's been good at that. <laughs> that's brilliant and do you know what like that's i think it's really good because it's it's not just the fitness that i think you know that you're encouraging there but the community spirit you know what i mean it's bringing all your neighbors you know together and you know when everything kind of goes back you know back there say back to normal but when things you know the, the new world arises or whatever's to come next after all this i think those connections are going to remain do you know what I mean people are going to be like oh do you remember that time when we were doing fitness in the street you know oh, we should do that again and I think it's uh, it's bringing back the community spirit and uh, yeah, it's, it's nice as well because like for instance, there's like obviously in a street there's an, a mix of ages. Mm. Um, we've got like children in their garden who are joining in, doing like their little bits of the star jumps, the squats, and having a little <laughs> yeah. laugh. And then you've got like a grandmother who's like near and seventy, might even be seventy odd, and yeah. is joining on, in the street. So yeah, it's a mix of mix of ages and yeah, just. You don't, you you know, you wake up, you rush off to work or whatever you do, and you come home and you just say hello. It's really brief, isn't it? So it's yeah. nice to actually have that interaction because, like, some of the old women, uh, for instance, bless, and they're widows, so mm-hmm. they're in the house all day on their own doing lockdown. So for them, a Saturday, there might be a chance to actually, yeah, socialize a little bit. Mm-hmm. But although we are trying to keep safe, you know, they, they will have a little natter at the end in their gardens and a cup of tea, but yeah, it's nice, it's nice to keep going. And yeah, do you know what? That's uh, that's like I think you we we probably underestimate or like underestimate how the importance of those sorts of things to um, people who are living by themselves or elderly people, just because. You know, yeah, like they've got con, they've got perhaps family, you know, and you know, and, and other people that they're friendly with in the community. But like you said, in this street, then if they're living by themselves, you know, that could be something that could be like the highlight of their week, do you know what I mean? And the, the highlight of their month in some instances. So I think it's good to, you know, to have these things because all you know, it's further reaching than, than sometimes you realize. Definitely. But, 
Yeah, the um, what what you said just now was really interesting about the slot uh, having slotted, um, you know, approaches to a gym so that you can only have a certain amount of people in at any given time. Yeah. And I actually think that's the way to go forward with with you know for gyms going you know in when things go back to normal because I I was wondering about this this morning. You know, you would need to kind of wipe everything down. We'd have to have like each station has got you know a like squirty spray, disinfectant spray with a cloth, and people would do it before and afterwards. But you're relying on either the gym staff to, to keep doing it then or relying on people to keep doing it themselves, which you can't always, you know, rely people to do. It'd have um, to be the gym staff, I think, wouldn't it? it yeah. if, if it was something like an hour, you get an hour slot and then like a 15 minute or 20 minute turnover where the equipment gets cleaned, even yeah. half an hour, and then like another slot opens just because you're maintaining some sort of like, I don't know, it's participation good. from the members. Do you know what? I think that I actually think that's exactly the way it needs to go. I am that like honestly, I think you've hit a nail on the head there because you know you're able to you're definitely able to keep social distancing. And like you said, you can actually maintain the the cleaning and things like that then as well. And realistically, you could probably do that with pubs and the rest of it. You know, it's just the enforcement of it is going to be the difficult thing. You know what I mean? Actually, you know, can you imagine now you you go you open up a pub for two hours, you've got a two hour slot in the pub, you've had like you know, eight pints and, you know, and someone's trying to oh, kick you out. You're like, I'm not going. Oh, chance my mate social distancing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. okay. uh, that's um, the pubs and stuff. That's going to be the main challenge. But I think, yeah, like you've hit the nail on the head with there with the gyms. I think that will, you know, it's definitely a way for some, for some gym owners to look at. And like you said, with personal training, you can definitely do that at a distance. You can do that out and about as well. I suppose it doesn't necessarily have to be in, you know, in a gym. Um, I, for what you mentioned about online, I definitely think this for personal trainers, for yoga teachers, um, funny enough, I spoke with Gareth Beer about this as well, about the, um, about hot pod yoga in Swansea. And yeah. I remember the, you know, the first, the first online class that they did on zoom, yeah. you know, there's like 150 people, you know, it was, I was in, it was insane, uh, how many people were on there. It was on a donation basis, but you can imagine like most people are happy to give, you know, five quid, 10 quid, or whatever it is to, to help a business out. And I thought that's, you know, 45 minutes with 150 people on, you know, on an online class. Fantastic. It hasn't costed anything. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's just incredible. And I think, I, I think there's definitely I, a lot. Oops, sorry, I think on. it could be way for this. I think it could be way forward um, for some businesses, even after this. Mm. Like from the comfort of your own home, if you can get that many people and you're showing yeah. value, because people, people, yoga's obviously had a boom in the oh. past, like, I don't know, eight to 10 years. Mm. And in fact, funny enough, I think that's where me and you started speaking was when me and Lloyd went down. Uh, oh the yeah, the hot pod yoga, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, right, um, <laughs> yeah, hot pod yoga, so brilliant. I was the yoga at the time. Mm. I haven't been doing much myself, actually. It's been about a year, well, a year since I was doing it properly. You know, I've kind of done it a little bit since, um, but I've, I've really noticed the, the difference, you know, since I've stopped, you know, like my, um, my, my recovery has gone down with my running and stuff like that. Like usually I used to be able to go out for, you know, a, a hefty run, like, you know, 10 plus miles, um, you know, and I'd be able to get back up the next morning, no issues whatsoever. And I could go and, you know, and do another long run. Um, but I am finding now that my legs are suffering for a couple more days and I think that's, um, I think that's majorly down to the fact that it's, uh, you know, that I've, like obviously I have stopped doing yoga, so my body's just seizing up a little bit more than you know, I used to. Um, and potentially as well, I've started going back to eating meat and things. So, you know, I know if you're on plant-based or whatever, prim primarily plant-based, the recovery is supposed to be a little bit, um, you know, a bit, a bit better, isn't it, from plant-based. And I think that might be, it might be a factor. I think it's mostly due to not doing yoga, though, that my recovery's uh, going down. Yeah, I mean, the yoga, I think it is underestimated because mm -hmm. everyone tends to focus on like the strength and the gains aspect of everything. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, you know, no one's going to ask you like, how flexible are you? They're going to ask you like, how much do you, <laughs> yeah. how much do you deadlift? <laughs> you, yeah. you, if you ask someone how flexible you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, that's um, true. I think, especially for, 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 for men, isn't it, for males? Because I think it is that, uh, you know, if you, like, you wouldn't go up to a bloke and be like, oh, how flexible are you? Can you touch your toes? You know, it's, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's definitely, it's different, um, you know, for, for guys in that sense. But I think, People who like I know a lot of rugby players are doing you know doing yoga now for um for different things. There's a um another personal trainer who's I can't remember the name of the gym, but it's Alicia Huxley. So she um she takes a class in I think it's Vitality in Port Albert. Is that yeah? She works and, up there. 
That's it. Yeah. Um, so the, the class that she's taking is strength. No, is it stretch for strength? Stretch for strength, isn't it? Yeah, I've seen on Insta. Yeah, I think that's a good way to market it, actually, because, you know, what you said there as well, like about you know, a lot of blokes, they kind of don't want to do yoga. I know a couple of my mates are like, oh, no, I don't want to do yoga, um, you know, and they've got this kind of perception, you know, about only like hippies and, and stuff like that doing it. And it's not the case, do you know what I mean? It's, you know, they are, I think the perception is starting to change now. So, you know, that it, you know, they realize that yoga is something that we should all be doing a little bit of at least just because it helps you in all areas. I think until you do it, you don't see the value for it. I think that's what I found myself. Like when Lloyd was mentioned, he was doing it. Mm. I was, I was thinking, yeah, that was great. Cause at the time, me and him were doing like the Wim Hof method. So we were, we were, yeah, yeah. I don't think we were meant to be doing this, but we're going up Clue Reservoir mm. and it was absolutely freezing as in like there was icicles on the side of the river. <laughs> yeah. Go in there. Um, and what would he shout? What was he shouting? Um, you, I think he would shout in his like silly voice, like, this is chemistry and we are dealing with it physically or something. <laughs> but whatever he was shouting was getting me through the like eight minutes in the water. But yeah, I, I found that amazing. I don't know if you've done that. Um, you know, what? I haven't done, I haven't done the cold. I, well, so I've been doing cold showers for, well, since I got in, you know, I, I came across like the Wim Hof method and all, of, you know, everything that he does. It's, it was probably like about a year and a half ago, maybe I started doing cold showers. Um, I've been in like the sea water, you know, when it's, it's cold and I stay in there for as long as I can. Uh, but I haven't fully submerged myself on the regular, if you know what I mean. So like what you're doing by there, I probably, I have never done it as severe as that. Like the sea water, I don't think it's naturally, as, I don't think it's anywhere near as cold as probably what you were doing if you were in the reservoir. <laughs> It was freezing, I won't lie. One time I got quite ill. I think we stayed in a little bit longer, but yeah. <laughs> Wim Hof's thing, I think, is like breathing, isn't it? A lot of it's like to do with breathing and that. Like ox like obviously um Yeah. Like overloading on oxygen and stuff like that. Yeah, there's 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 a few elements to to Wim Hof's thing actually, because if you download the app, it gives a bit more of a context to it because he, he breaks it up into three parts, really. So he's got breathing, commitment, and uh, cold. So the breathing is obviously, you know, doing the um, all the way in and then letting go all the way in, letting it go, um, you know, and then you can, you hold, you breathe all the way out on the last one. You hold that for like a minute or two minutes or something. Yeah. Then you breathe all the way in and hold that for like 15, 20 seconds. Then you kind of like release it and then you go back into the second or third cycle. Uh, but there is one that he does where you, when you breathe, I think you breathe all the way out on the last one, but then you do press ups. And yeah. I've seen him do this, right? And it's it, it's weird actually because you're um, because you've got no air in your lungs and you're doing these press ups and I don't I can't really it does it does energize you. Do you know what I mean? Because you're getting the blood pumping when uh, you know your body's already kind of oxygenated from the the breathing you've just done and you don't need to take a breath while you're doing it. It's it's pretty interesting. Um, but you know you've done it right when you know your teeth and your jaw and everything is like it's it's really. Um, I don't know if this feels, it feels like quite numb, you know, your, your body, your body, your jaw and everything, it feels really numb. And, uh, and you do feel a bit light, lightheaded as well. Uh, but it's an amazing feeling. It's brilliant. And it really, you notice the difference afterwards. Cause he said, I think one of the ways he said to do it was to, um, you know, if you feel it, like you can do it in the morning, for example, when you first wake up, you do it cause you kind of, you oxygenate your body, you, you know, um, you get, you're energizing your body as well. And I have found that, um, you know, in the morning, I find my sinuses and stuff are a little bit like, you know, blocked all the time, but they just feel, you know, a little bit blocked. But then as soon as I do the Wim Hof uh, method and then have a cold shower, my sinuses are fine. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's no issues whatsoever. I feel, you know, a lot more productive, a lot more, uh, you know, happy to, you know, and, and ready to tackle the day and stuff like that. I had, I had to go that breathing. Um, I think it was the first one he'd done. Um, like you said, you inhale and you exhale for like longer periods. Hmm. And then like you kind of exhale for even longer at the end and hold it. Yeah, I, did, I, I know it sounds silly, but I did get like a little buzz from it. I did feel wicked, like alert. Yeah, after. that's it. You do. You get like you do get a weird buzz from it. Uh, funny, if I spoke with um, um, Nick, he's uh, one of the guys who runs Swansea Half Marathon. Uh, we spoke about it about two, three weeks ago, actually, and he said that he was doing the Wim Hof method, but he, he won try. He did try one time doing the Wim Hof method um, whilst in a cold shower. And I, and I have that, like I've done the focus breathing before and and while I'm in there and stuff, but not like, not the full 30, you know, repetitions. And he said that he nearly did, uh, he nearly collapsed. Yeah. I don't so, think you meant to do the two together. Are you? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I think the breathing's important, but like to do the way, do it the way he does it. 
um, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a funny one, really. It's a bit of a dodge, you know, bit too dodgy because it does make you really lightheaded. And they do say to do it sitting down or laying down. Um, but yeah, the commitment aspect of it, um, I think he's more. That's more about yeah, you commit committing yourself to cons- consistently do it. Um, you know, and to what else is there? I, I don't know. Yeah, there's, there's there's a few elements. If you download the app, it's WHM method or Wim Hof method app or something. It's uh, it's, it's good. It's got a few different exercises that you can do on there, and it breaks it down for you. Um, there are some courses you can do which are quite expensive as well. I have I am dying to do it. But <laughs> one last thing, while we're on that, just a little bit of geeky info. Yeah. I'm sure there's something like um he has got like more brown fat in his body, so like he's more able to deal with the cold. But uh-huh. I think if you like say you um I didn't know there was more than one type of fat if I'm being honest um yeah. and I I could be wrong here and physiology <laughs> yeah, is not my strong point because I didn't take it on my course yeah <laughs> but yeah I think your body kind of like develops um like a tolerance towards it if you know what I mean so mm-hmm. you can actually build up your brown fat stores or like your white adipose tissue will maybe I don't think it turns to brown fat somehow I don't know the process um. But yes, brown fat is meant to be more similar to like muscle than it is fat or something crazy like that, man. I remember reading it when I first got into him. Yeah. Um, I was just gonna, I was gonna say there's something to do with um I think there's something to do with hemoglobin as well, isn't it? I know this is different, like slightly different. I was just looking at it for sure. Yeah, the red protein responsible for transporting oxygen into the blood of vertebrae. Um and it comprises of um yeah, four different units. But uh, that, I was going to say that's something that he talks about as well as the hemoglobin. I think it produces more hemoglobin. Is that right? Or yeah, the hemoglo- uh, the hemoglobin blind, uh, binds with like the ru- red. It's found in red blood cells. It binds with the oxygen. Right. So that's where it transports oxygen around your body. Yeah. When you're inhaling more and more oxygen, that's I think that's the type of overload buzz you get from it. Right. Okay. Okay. So things like smoking, for instance, mm. will negatively impact your ability to. Uh, transport oxygen around your body. Right. So like okay. That's why stuff like overloading then will be more of a buzz for you. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So, do you know, it'd probably be interesting to see people who are perhaps like, you know, smokers that are, you know, integrated the Wim Health method, you know, in their daily kind of routine because they'd probably notice more of a significant difference then to somebody who's generally fitter and, uh, and doing a lot more running and stuff like that. I would imagine so. Hmm. Well, what are your thoughts on at the minute? Like, there's so many people. I know bike shops are like inundated at the minute with, uh, you know, with people. I know somebody who works in um, one one of the the bike shops in Swansea anyway, and they're working, you know, six in the morning until ten in the night and stuff like that. You know, they work in crazy hours just because they're having so much. Um, in, you know, there's so many people wanting bikes. There's so many people wanting parts for, you know, for bikes and things like that. Like obviously those industries then have, have flourished in this, you know, in this climate. So what, what's, your, what's your take on the more people doing, you know, cycling and running? Do you think this is something that's going to carry on or do you think it'll drop off when gyms open again? The part of me wants to believe it will carry on. Mm. Um, we've been really lucky as well because the weather since lockdown has, it's been dry the majority. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hope it will. I don't think it will, if I'm being honest, I think when eventually, um, either we learn to live with COVID or it goes back to normal. And mm. I think it, we'll start using the gyms more when they reopen. Yeah. I would like to think so, because where we live, why wouldn't you want to go for a run or a cycle? Because we're right next to the sea. Yeah. I, I've lived, I've lived um, in Salisbury for like nine months mm. when, I, when I was younger. And not being by the sea on a nice day, it was like, well, what do, we, what do you do? <laughs> yeah. Swans, you, like, you just go to the beach, it's normal. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, hopefully people do. Another thing on that, kind of linked in with, with like fitness is I've seen loads of women like uh, cycling past with, I was really impressed yesterday. I seen like a woman go past with a, a young baby on the very back seat mm. and then like a buggy behind her bike with mm-hmm. like a little bit of an older child, like a toddler in there. Yeah. And I thought like, you know what? She's got two children and <laughs> people like might with, I don't know, with no children or whatever might say, oh, you know, I haven't got time to exercise. Mm. She's got them strapped on the bike with it. You know, I thought that was amazing. If she can do that, mm. out of day, she's obviously cooking for them and that as well and flipping, cleaning and whatever. Mm. I couldn't even imagine what it is being a mum or, or a parent. Mm. She's getting the time into exercise and take them out. I thought it was fantastic. 
That is, that, you know what, that's really good, actually. I've seen something, I've seen similar uh, things to what you're talking about, actually. I do know uh, what you mean. Yeah, there's like, you know, one that sits right on the back and then there's like a little thing clipped to the back tyre, isn't it, that kind of drags along. Yeah, that's um, it. I, I have noticed actually with, like you said, down the front as well, I tend to run or cycle like, you know, along the pier because obviously with, with us, with Swansea, this pier to pier is six miles dead on, uh, you know, right away along the front. So it's 12 miles if you come back as well. So it's a nice run or, you know, or cycle. Yeah. Um, you know, I've done both the last two days actually. Um, and it's, it is nice to see how many people are actually out and about. I know they obviously, you know, you're not supposed to be doing too much at the moment, but yeah. you know, people are getting out and they are social distancing. So you can see people on the beach, they're you know, miles apart from each other because it's so big. There's so much room on the pathway. You know, people are walking or running and cycling, whatever. They're all adhering to, to social distancing, but it's still yeah. nice to see, you know, people with their families or, you know, couples and stuff that are going out and, and still getting the sunshine and, and things. Cause that's the most important, one of the most important things you can do in this current climate, I think is, you know, reducing the amount of stress that you're, you know, you're having on your body, uh, your mental stress, do you know what I mean? Cause with the news and stuff, it's, it does, it, it does uh, impact you negatively, doesn't it? And then, you know, getting the sunshine as well, you know, vitamin D for you is, is so important at the moment. To be honest, right. I try not to read the, read the news. Like, purposefully just because i find it all like doom and gloom mm. and, like i don't know i just for me for me it just um i don't it doesn't help my mind state then if I, I i do keep an eye on like the top stories of the top news but otherwise and i try and stay steer away from it to be honest yeah i i think i was having this conversation with somebody the other day i did, I deleted the facebook app off my phone you know um I've, I've only got instagram and whatsapp now you know out of the social networks on my phone and when i go to go on facebook i will i'll only do it for a purpose so if i you know to check messenger or to you know put something up on there um yeah. you know but i don't tend to scroll anymore you know that and that's that has been such a you know positive thing for my mindset just getting away from it because people there's a lot of people which are opinionated there's a lot of false information being thrown around you know then you've got the media you know which is just chucking the the clickbait articles and things like that up and you know it makes it it makes the whole situation seem potentially a lot worse than it actually is we don't know it could be you know it could be worse it could be better but you know it, it, it either way for me now not looking at the news and just going up the shop and kind of you know going for a run or a cycle the world feels normal you know it doesn't feel like there's you know mm. i'm exactly the same as you there and i think if you can not that i want to stay in my own bubble because that's obviously not right either you know I, I try and stay informed yeah. but i do try and steer away from any like like you said especially the facebook stuff because it's all opinions and <laughs> if, I, <laughs> if i want to read the proper facts you know i'll go to the proper places i don't want to hear someone down the road mm. charging two pence in and that <laughs> doing my nothing wondering whether it's true or not yeah yeah but, you know that is i think what you said about being in a bubble right i've um funny enough my father said this to me because he, he tried mentioning something about the news the other day i was like ah, bap, bap, bap. i was like don't want to know don't need to know i was like you know this it, unless it's going to benefit me in some way to have this bit of information i don't i don't want it i don't need it um you know and he, he said to me he was like well, you're living in a bubble and i was like yeah, but I was like, is that such a bad thing? Because you know, we all we all we've all got our own like you know our own lives or and things like that, our own inclusive little bubbles in terms of our family and our you know our social friend you know social circles and stuff. And all we've done right now, realistically, is just close you know tighten that bubble a little bit. I mean, we're still in contact with people, but I think you don't necessarily need to know what's going on across the you know you know you only need to know what's going on in your communities. That's what I mean. So people have kind of gone a bit more close knit. And realistically, you know, we don't need to know what's going on, you know, up in Scotland or England, you know, unless we've got family there and, and, it, and it kind of directly relates to us. Uh, you know, we don't need to know what's going on in different countries as such. You know, some people like to have that information, but I don't feel like it doesn't always serve a purpose to, no, to I know that. Agree with that. Totally. And I think it's funny what you said, because it might be like a generation thing, because I'm very similar with my dad. Mm. Because, like He'll get home from work, like my dad works for welsh water so he's he's classed that key worker yeah yeah um, and obviously my mum's a nurse so like i am a little bit worried about them at the moment and at the start obviously i was re really worried just because they're at an age that it was said to be more vulnerable yeah um but yeah they, they'd get home from work and they'd watch the news religiously and like mm -hmm. i'd be like oh, I, I don't want to even watch it so i'd, I'd go up to another room but yeah, yeah. I, think, I think it's more of a generation thing as well yeah, definitely. I think, you know, I think we are, I think this generation, like the younger generation that, you know, 
we, we tend, I think a lot of people do believe in clickbait, uh, but the younger generation, I think because we've kind of grown up with social media and, and we're almost a little bit more accustomed to the way, um, the way media markets things, sto- stories and things to us now, you know, I think we've, we're a little bit more, uh, wise to it in some sense do you know what i mean if we see yeah. something we kind of go hmm yeah but is that really true you know let me check the source of that type thing whereas yeah. i think we're a little bit numb to stories or maybe like what, what some people might say like a bit woke so you're not really <laughs> you're not you're not buying the hype of everything you read or that even if it is on the news or yeah you can kind of make your own mind up on some things yeah do you know what joe, joe rogan put up a, a post on instagram a week or two ago, I think, um, you know, and apparently the, you know, the Pentagon or the government out in America, and they've released now files um, say, you know, with like, you, you know, UFO sightings and, and saying that they've, you know, they've got, they don't know obviously what these, they are, but they're, you know, unidentified flying objects and they've released this, um, you know, on pictures and videos and whatever. And uh, he put a, you know, a picture up saying, you know, on any, what's he saying? On any other, you know, any other day or any other month or something, you know, this would have been big news. But in April of 2020, nobody gives a fuck <laughs> just because, the, you know, there's just so much craziness going on at the moment. You know, it is, we're living in, you know, a very surreal time. And I think people are just, you know, like with that, that news has come out and nobody's gone, ah, nobody gives a shit really because it's like there's so much other stuff happening. I kind of think with us as well, I think less surprises us because, like, for instance, if you watch a Netflix documentary, there's so many true documentaries on there that are mind blowing. Like, how the hell are they real? Yeah. Less maybe will surprise us because of that type of stuff as well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. The, the world's lost a lot of it's, it's mystery now, I think, hasn't it? Because I think science has got a big part to play in this. Like, you know, um, for example, you know, if you talk like a couple of hundred years ago, or, you know, yeah, a couple of hundred years ago, a thousand years ago, you know, you'd look up at the sky and, you know, with the meteor shower we had the other day, you know, can you imagine how <laughs> mind blowing that was to, you know, to people back then to see these, you know, meteors or big, like, you know, uh, shooting stars or whatever going past and not knowing what those are, you know, it's like, it's that sense of wonder. And I think we've lost that in you know, right the way across the world in some sense, do you know I mean? Because we've let science, not that it's a bad thing, but, um, you know, science has kind of put a right. label on everything and just yeah. said, right, this is what this is and this is how that works and stuff. And I think it's good to have that knowledge about the world, but then it does take away the wonder and the mystery and stuff as well. Yeah, no, I do I agree with you there. Hmm. And so what I was going to say as well, I'll, uh, I got one more question for you. Actually, I didn't do this one uh, to kind of end the podcast normally. Um, so... What what change would you like to see in the world, and and why? Um, I think this is relevant at the moment as well. Now, so like yeah, we're going well. to um, To be honest with you, what change would I like to see in the world? I would like, and it sounds like you know, like cliche, but like mm. everyone to maybe reflect a little bit more. And be- mm. because of what we're going through at the minute, I don't think there's a better time than ever to actually every single person, every government, every business to like just reevaluate what we do like yeah. as society because I don't think we place enough onus on well-being like what we were talking about earlier mm. um like if if there's a chance for children to stay at home one or two more days a week and learn from home mm. online while, whilst being in the company of their parents then stuff like that why why not do that yeah. if people who work in offices get the chance to work from home instead mm. of going to a place of work and travel unnecessarily for like five days of the week then why why bother i I think there's a lot rather than pinpointing one thing i Mm. think a lot i'd like to see change um one thing that resonates with me um Mm. that i think i would love to see is more like sustainable transport Mm. um like last year yeah it was like yeah it was last year uh me and my girlfriend we done a um interrail tour on europe okay yeah and it was fantastic i I love traveling anyway but it was like the fate, my favorite holiday I've ever done. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if, if like, obviously with like planes and stuff, the emissions are mental and the cars, the emissions are mental. I, even when I've been taking my bike out, all the pollution around, like I'm driving behind the car, I just feel yeah. like I'm breathing in shit all, all the time. 100%, um, yeah. Yeah, so like that would probably be a massive thing. Something to do with sustainable energy and sustainable transport. 
And I think, yeah, like you said, right, this is the perfect time to, to rebuild, but in the right way. I don't know if you've seen it, but Milan, um, Milan have uh, basically, they, they, I think they're, they are moving forward with it. They're actually looking at pedestrianising 35 kilometres within the centre of Milan. So Milan, I think, in terms of its size, I think is quite similar to London, um, yeah. but 35 kilometres in like, you know, a circular circumference or, or whatever around the, uh, you know, the main part of Milan, that is a... That's bonkers, and they're pedestrianising that and putting it, and just having cyclists and people walking. And I think the the long term impact that will have on you know people within the city, you know within the city and the centre and stuff is going to be incredible. Um, I, all major cities should adopt something like that if if it was possible. I don't see why not because something like that is fantastic. Yeah, I mean with Swansea, the tram. If they brought the tram back, you know, on Mumbles Road, you could have Mumbles Road as a single, you know, single carriageway, um, for example, or like, you know, because at the moment there's two lanes on each side, isn't it? You could have, you know, just the, you know, one up, one down, and then the tram going up and down. Then on the other side, um, you are like the amount of traffic that you know you'd reduce by having that is in, you know, is significant. I think um, just because I know Mumbles Road is such a nice area, and I think if they were to do that. You'd slow the the pace down on that road, and you could build up around it. Then you could have more little micro businesses popping up and stuff, and it would be you'd have a lot more people just walking up and down, not just on the cycle path, but being in the area in general. I think because you've got the Airbnbs and or the, you know, the hotels and stuff on the front as well. I think you know I, I think it'd be a good it would be good to see that in Swansea. You know, having the tram come back and maybe you know more more cycle paths and things like that just funny if cycling in the last couple of weeks i've realized how easy it is to actually get around swansea on a bike i had no idea <laughs> I, I for years right i must have been 14 the last time i went up the cycle path by blackpill yeah and we used to go flying and then go down like the the mountain bike route mm. but the other day i cycled up to an alive down the cycle path and just thought this is so easy why why haven't i done this more yeah oh you can you can probably on a, on a busy day, you can get to Mumbles quicker from where I live in Penland um, than if you were to drive. Like, yeah. even, even in town, actually. Like, I think it takes me 13 minutes, generally, on average, to drive to, to town or something like that from where I live. Um, I can probably do that in about the same amount of time or 10 minutes on a bike. So on busy days, I could do it in less time. I know in the winter, it's not the nicest. And when it's raining, it's not the nicest. But, you know, I think it is... It's definitely something we should we should look at doing more of. And the reflection thing you mentioned, um, I, I'm glad you mentioned that actually, because now more than ever, I think loads of people are talking about you know, like a lot of people are saying like about working out from home and you know the, and stuff. And I think it's important to to do those things to work from work out from home and get fitness in and get out and about in, in the sunshine, but also to realize that this time is just good for like you said self reflection and looking at what you were doing before all this happened, seeing where you might have been going wrong or how you were running like a hundred miles an hour and, and killing yourself and how you can actually look at adopting better ways of moving forward. Um, you know, self-reflection is, is, is very underrated and I think it's, it's important definitely, you know, now more than ever. So I, I agree. Sometimes as well, like, sorry to carry on and waffle on a little bit, but like <laughs> sometimes it's a little bit hard to do yourself. So like it's, it's, no one likes taking criticism, but like sometimes if you can ask other people or like, I don't know if I was a business, if I had my own business, for example, um, or I know I've asked like good mates, like my friend Robbie and my friend Lloyd, just for information on like PT and ideas. Yeah. Like sometimes no one likes criticism, but it's a great way mm -hmm. to actually get feedback for yourself. Oh, 100%. Um, I, th I think, I think a guy said the other day, um, like the, the, if it's your business, you tend to kind of like over evaluate and, and think more positively of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, peers will tend to be like pretty bang on their feedback is good and then like managers will kind of be like negative towards yeah. the business but i thought that was really interesting so like pia i think if you can ask friends about yourself or about your business like ideas and and constructive criticism i think that would really helpful as well yeah definitely surround you and it and goes back to surround yourself with the right people yeah. then doesn't it, I suppose. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no uh, thank you very much for coming on today dan that's, uh, that's awesome it's good to talk to you as well man um I was just going to say, lastly, uh, with the Ideas and Beers social, guys, it's uh, ideasbeers.co uh, for Instagram and Ideas and Beers on, on Facebook. So uh, get in touch on there. Dan, what's your social now for your, for your PT? Um, I think it's Dan <laughs> underscore Sheehan underscore fitness or Sheehan7. I've got two. So yeah, the fitness and the personal accounts. But there we go. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll link them in the, in the post and stuff for this anyway. So uh, people can get in touch. And if you've got any questions for, uh, for me or Dan, guys, and uh, yeah, fire away. So.
Awesome. Thank you very much, Ray. It's been a pleasure. Cool. Hey, good to see you. Take care, Ray. Take care, mate.